This is Andrew Dwight. Hey, I'm just going to quickly show you how to import an IFC model into uh, SketchUp and then draw around it in Plaspec. Uh, so I'm going to go import and then I'm going to go to IFC down the bottom here. So, uh, so I actually want to import a 3D model. So let's just go back, file, import, right, IFC, uh, select the file and go import. Right, essentially you'll see it ready in the IFC file and when this is complete it'll come up with what's been imported. Okay, and go close. Right. Give it a second. Okay, and now we have the model. Now, look, I didn't author this model. It's a two-story project. And you'll notice that there's several things that are a little bit strange here. We've got this over here. These are usually, uh, you can, if you click on them, you can find out what they are by... Uh, Looking at the classifier, which if you want to find that, it would be under, uh, if you right click up here, or view toolbars. Oops, sorry, not on the screen, one second. Uh, classifier here, okay. And if you want to know what the classification is of something, when you click on it, um, you'll find uh, what that classification is. So this is IFC site, okay. And if I'm going inside of it, the group, I've got IFC building, right? Um, so basically, you would explode the top three levels if you just want to get down and dirty and start modeling. Okay, so really what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to find the level at which I need to be at, right? Okay, I'm going to get rid of it and delete this because I don't really, it's not important for what I need to do. Um, so I'm going to get rid of that and get rid of... I'm actually going to explode this, right click, and I'm going to explode, right, and now you can see that I can get rid of this over here. And these purple here are usually uh, IFC space, which is, there we go, IFC space, which is basically whoever drew it in model, they write in the space and therefore they can figure out their, you know, calculations for air conditioning or whatever it is. I'm going to explode that again, right click, explode, get rid of this here, delete that, delete that, delete that, all these spaces. All the purple I'm going to delete. And now you can see I'm starting to get back to something that is similar to uh, what it is that I require. And you'll notice that this looks like it's got some options in here for different types of bathrooms. At the moment, I'm going to leave those there because we might look at, uh, at doing some options management and that won't be for today's tutorial, it'll be for something else. I'm just going to get outside of here and then I'm going to go back out and now I just have this in a bounding box. I'm going to move it over to my axes um, if I was going to import back into Revit or, or whatever, I wouldn't do that um, because usually you would go a paste in place and it would be a, a location. However, this is what I've got here now. All right, so you can understand by using the classifier what things are. Uh, and basically you can see here that I still have a whole heap of exploded um, categories. Now, as I break into these, you can see I've got IFC window, IFC standard case, don't know what that is. Um, regardless, all I need to be able to do is actually trace around this model. So I'm going to get outside of the model and I'm just going to figure out some heights so I can do it in, in Plusback. And if obviously uh, you've got a drawing that's actually going with this, which could be a PDF or a set of construction drawings, you're going to know the um, ins and outs of what's going on behind this here. So I can see that my underside of floor is from here, so I'm going to draw a line down from here, hopefully. Just to understand what my wall height is, this looks like it's got a parapet that goes up and the second story uh, is done out of a lightweight cladding. Um, regardless, so once you've figured out the height of your wall, um, I'll try and get it from here if I can. I might have to hide a wall. Sometimes it's better to just keep exploding until you get down to the information that you actually require. You can see that it's IFC building. I don't really need that for what I'm doing. Uh, okay, now I'm back sort of down into things. I can hide individual elements now, so I can hide that. And now I can see, well, here's the underside of my joist. Therefore, if I actually went to the top of my slab, I've got a 2740 high wall. 
and from that 2740 height, I have a 160 step down from my slab. Right, so I'm just gonna go through and quickly draw a wall and go uh, to my walls. I'm gonna go brick veneer, 2740 with a 160 step down. Okay, so wall height's 2740, uh, it's brick veneer. And you know what, I should really go into it more, this is just really to show you how to use an IFC model. Uh, and I'm going to go to my manual overrides, external step down for concrete and joists 160. And I'm going to go, uh, I don't want any of that stuff, so I'm just gonna go submit. Okay, and basically what I do is I'm just gonna trace around, and I'm, you know, you could quite simply, if all those walls are the same height, put a, um, a uh, section cut through and then basically trace over the section cut. I'm going to just quickly draw this one wall in for you now so you can see how it works. Right, and I now have my 160 wall. You can see that I probably should have drawn it from outside of wall. I'm kind of rushing a little bit because it's Friday afternoon and beer o'clock. All right, so if I went to um, view or so edit and unhide all, what it's done is it's put that other wall in for me. So if I actually selected this wall and wanted to put in a window, it will op add, it will open up, um, or it'll turn a, a transparent view. So now I can see clearly where my window is and, and the type of window. Um, so it looks like a slider. And if I actually spend a little bit more time, I could very quickly just type in the height of the window. You can see I'm gonna eyeball this, I'm about 300 too high. It's gonna change the height of my window. <clears throat> maybe 1200. The benefit is, is that now I have a window that is actually in line with the existing window. It saves me going through and measuring. It saves me using a DWG. As before, I mentioned if you actually put a section cut in, uh, we can go to here. And basically, if I just section it at the slab height, now I can see where I actually can't need to draw my walls. And in this case, from outside of wall would be better. Revit doesn't actually draw like we do. So Revit doesn't draw in um, uh, cavities and, and studs and things like that. So you kind of get used to it. It's very rudimentary. Basically, you'll have a, a section cut through and you'll uh, the, the overall thickness of the wall is basically the geometry it's adding in. However, that's not how we do it in Plusbeat. Regardless, um, so now I simply go back to my wall to go to the outside of wall, trace around my walls and you have that. And then when you go to put it in a window, you can basically trace over that. I hope it helps you out guys. It's a good way to get started. Cheers.